What's up everyone? This is Bart Coppens, your favorite online entomologist. And today I'm going to show, show you something that I've never shown on my channel before. It is a triple hybrid species. What we are looking here is a hybrid of three different species. How does that work? Well, I will explain it to you. What we are looking at here is a, a hybrid animal of Actias ningpoana, Actias sinensis and Actias gnoma. Now what not many people be know is that uh, some species of moon moths actually form fertile hybrids. Now that may confuse some people because according to the rules of Darwinian biology um, Two individuals or populations that produce infertile offspring should be classified as different species. In reality, however, nature doesn't always follow the rules. And in some cases, yes, it's true, different species can make fertile hybrids. And this allows breeders to continue breeding these hybrids even with more species, as long as the offspring is viable. Now obviously these species are very very strongly related before they can be interbred and form fertile offspring but the reason most hybrids are infertile is because different species tend to have a different number of chromosomes and now if recombination happens during fertilization then you will get two uh, sets of incompatible chromosomes which results in the species not being able to make adequate sperm cells that can recombine into offspring. But when it comes to very similar and related species, sometimes it's possible for very similar and closely related species to have the same number of chromosomes and be genetically compatible. And this in very rare cases happens in captivity which allows people to create hybrids like these a triple hybrid amazing have you seen this before now i have to say i did not make this hybrid myself they were a gift from a friend okay this is important to notice because it is actually very hard to make hybrids like this in captivity you need to have a lot of skill and knowledge and trial and error and I don't want to take the credit for myself. This is not my creation. It is a gift from a friend from Ukraine and he is a great breeder. And I'm very privileged that he was able to share some of these with me personally. Now to collectors, these specimens can be worth a lot of money, but I'm not going to sell these because I want to see if I can breed them further. And I am not a commercial collector or salesman who who kills specimens for money. I find these more interesting to be when they are alive. Now currently we're, this is the male, but I also have females of this weird hybrid. Uh, but the females are a little bit strange looking. First of all, they are very, very small, smaller than the male, and also a little bit oddly shaped. You, you take a look here, I have another female of the triple hybrid. And notice how they are, all the specimens I have, in fact, are a bit awkwardly shaped. Now, the reason that some of these individuals probably have awkward proportions and are awkwardly shaped is because, genetically speaking, they are somewhat of a mess. I mean, they're basically a combination of three species with wildly different sizes and shapes. It's trying to fly away, but it's too cold for it to lift off. So, uh, and sometimes hybrids uh, result in very weird, wonky looking animals like these. Now, um, making hybrid animals is more than just a fun experiment. It actually tells us something about how genetically related these species they are, about their genetic compatibility and perhaps their evolutionary history because when two species form a fertile hybrid it actually tells us that they are very closely related and that may say something about 
the species barriers that prevent them from interbreeding or that have made them diverse in their evolutionary history. So yes, it has some knowledge and scientific value. I'm saying this because there's a group of people and when they see hybrid moths, they start crying. It's like, where, where? It's against nature. Where, where? It's against God. It's not natural. Yeah, dude, you know what's not natural? Taking medicines, going to a hospital, driving a car, turning on your heater in winter so you don't freeze to death, cooking your food, okay? So don't cry to me that this is not natural. Where, where? Those people don't understand biology and they are somewhat silly and conservative okay unless you are a caveman eating only raw food from animals he killed himself wearing nothing but bear fur then don't come complain to me uh, might be uh, uh, to me about what is natural okay what it really means is that you have a very limited conservative view of nature and you are trusting your emotions too much. Nothing about your life and our society is natural. Just saying this, it may sound a little bit salty, but I know there's people like that potentially also watching my channel. So uh, those people should keep their mouth closed as much as they can. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed the video. This is very unique footage. Now, with all of this being said in my video, I do have to say, I myself have never made hybrid animals before in captivity. And the only reason I'm filming these is because a friend of mine has, uh, was very kind to share his hybrid cocoons with me. But I myself am more interested in studying pure and wild species. I am not ethically opposed to making hybrids. I don't think it is unethical or weird. I think it has very uh, a lot of scientific value. But it is also not my interest. I prefer to study wild animals and not hybrids. This is a personal choice of mine, but not because I'm against it or something. And those people, in my opinion, are really silly people who should, who should read a book about biology or something. They need to be educated more. But... Um, this is definitely a very interesting video. You're not going to see this very often. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go now. I have work to do. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again in the future. Bye bye.